Welcome back everybody. Today we're discussing a project we've been working on throughout the entire winter. It started last fall basically and that is our greenhouse pond. Now this has been a project in the making and it was quite a bit of work to achieve this and we've achieved quite a bit of different things while building this pond and I wanted to share all that today and the simple construction and how we did this for basically free with everything we had on hand. Now if that sounds interesting please consider subscribing to the channel. This is the kind of DIY stuff we're always sharing on here so if you find it interesting definitely hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, let's get into this. So when we first started designing this pond and started excavating it we found that we had to break through a ton of rocky soil. There was just rock after rock in the soil and it made it very very difficult to actually excavate and break ground so we were using water free water from inside the greenhouse as we emptied and drained things and moved things around we were just using water to flow through and slowly break the soil down and then we excavated it we've shared that in quite a few videos or the first diy pond video we shared once we got through that rocky layer we found that we had some really heavy clay soil and that clay soil really came in handy. We started reusing everything and we've got a few experiments we did with this making concrete, DIY concrete, DIY bricks. So in the true sense of self-sufficiency, we didn't waste anything. We've got rocks that we pulled out and we sifted through them with our sifters and we were able to reuse all the clay soil, all the rocks and basically everything that we pulled out of this little excavated area was reused and recycled along with a whole bunch of wood ash that we were accumulating through the winter. So we found ourselves a few ways to use all of those old materials that otherwise would have went to waste and we put them to good use. So the first thing we ended up making is DIY bricks here. Now this is a homemade brick and it is water insoluble. Now this has been soaked in water and it is 100% waterproof. It does not break down in water. So we're able to reuse all those materials to make building materials, DIY natural building materials. So we made ourselves some DIY concrete bricks. Me and my son have had fun painting these. We've even got our little subscribe brick here and this is a DIY concrete and it is water insoluble. The paint isn't so we can't really soak these in water but it is darn resistant to water and these do not soak the water up and crumble. So if you look back to our first DIY pond video we accumulated a huge pile of clay soil and sandy soil and just plain rocky soil. So we've got all these free rocks and this is just an example of rocks. Some of them are limestone, some of them are just big old chunks of rock that we found in the ground. So we're just using those all over the greenhouse as thermal masses and stuff and to protect our geothermal tubing or using them simply in the pond. So the next step was to find some method of water retention. Now our clay soil is compactable and it will hold some water, especially if it's a heavily saturated rain. We will have puddles everywhere, but it slowly dries out and slowly seeps into the land. It's not like a red dirt clay soil from down south in Kentucky and areas like that. So what we had to do was find a method of water retention and we used an old recycled pond liner. We had this pond liner outside in a little permaculture pond. We had a little permaculture pond at our last property before we moved down here. So we ended up taking that little pond liner and we used it in this pond here. And there is no pokes, no holes. It's very thick and it's been used for almost 10 years now. And this is its second life in this pond here. Now this pond liner was smaller than I actually originally wanted the pond to be. We wanted the pond to be a little bit larger so we could hold catfish or tilapia or any type of fish, bullhead, something that we could actually harvest and eat from. We're not gonna be eating my son's koi fish. He might get a little upset with us. So we're gonna leave these guys in here as an experiment and see how we operate this pond. And if you know me, I don't wanna spend any money on electricity. So I've already had tons of 100 watt solar systems. So we've got maybe 500 watts of power coming into this greenhouse at any various point running different systems. So by simply recycling that system and setting it up in a different way, we're able to get aeration and water movement. I'm going to show our little tank over here and a method of actually filtering the water with plants. So I just wanted to state that everything we had that went into this pond development 
we already had on hand and we didn't spend a dime other than putting the manual labor into excavating this but like I said we've got all of these cool and useful items that we created from the waste from this pond so nothing was lost in this process and we were able to recycle and reuse basically everything that we took out of this hole so here we are down on the other end of the pond where we have the actual water moving system so we ended up taking a little pump just like we have you can see that blasting out you can see the pump down here now this pump right here was what I was using and it was a little extreme for the flow that I wanted so I ended up using one of our little aquaponics bins so just like this same exact setup and this aquaponics bin I had just placed some limestone we've got some mint in here you can see good flow to the water and you can see right down there it is draining right into here so this is just a continuous flow we ended up going with a pump that runs down here we we're able to downsize with a couple little fittings here that we already had on hand from heating experiments you can see I just bent this piece of copper with a pipe bender so I didn't bend it and kink it so it's a perfect little bend there shooting up in here these little holes in the side were perfect size for that little quarter inch piece of copper so we're getting the perfect flow rate and this is just running right down it has been running all morning all yesterday and the day before and it is not overflowing so we have the perfect flow rate with oxygenation so we're taking all the water through the pump up into this little system here which holds maybe 10 to 15 gallons of water we can feed the fish real quick too we're going to be making some of our own fish food so we don't have to pay for that because that is just an expense we really don't want to incur we can make tons of our own fish food with all of the plant life and matters that we create and grow all the time so we can make our own fish food from kales and algae and whatever we can grind it up dry it out so that may be a later video these fish will start to jump right up out of the water here pretty soon they go pretty wild once the food gets in the water there we go once one starts they all start going like in a feeding frenzy here it's pretty darn cool and we've got this shade cloth here to protect from the afternoon sun which is the most harsh and then we've got our shade cloth up over top the outside of the greenhouse over top of this area here we do not have a shade cloth covering up down by the stove here we wanted a little bit of area that got some decent strong sunlight for the figs and stuff like that to really produce my wife's lemon tree and some of our flowering plants here uh, back to the pond you can see all the fish really popping to life now so we may have a little bit of algae growth and we may have to throw some fish in to kind of combat that some algae eating fish or snails or something like that but right now our main focus is to filter this pond with plants and plant roots so if we can get some plant roots we'll build up a little bit of rock down on this end this is not complete yet but we will be using plants over in this corner possibly every corner so we don't have any clogging of this and overflow but we do want decent root development inside this container so we will be able to filter any stuff that is sucked off the bottom of the pond and put up into here through the filter there so we are going to naturally filter this so we're going to be able to filter and move water aerate it and all the like basically for free off of solar power from the sun and just using roots as opposed to having some type of filter system that we actually have to clean i just wanted it to be as natural as i possibly could without having to spend any extra money on developing the pond here so i just want to show that you can see these roots are already catching little bits of algae and stuff like that they've only been in here for a couple days but they are catching lots of little bits and they are starting to filter and clean the water as it's moving through this little system here so we're getting decent water flow we're getting aeration and then these fish have a decent pond it's about three and a half maybe four foot at one spot because we had built up the walls with the sandbags that we created from the excavated soil rocky soil that we really couldn't use for much else so 
We ended up filling sandbags all the way around, putting rocks up on top, and this is still an incomplete project. I just wanted to come out and show the development process and how we actually started a little aeration and all natural filter for this. So this is basically the beginning of the filter process. We're gonna to continue to add rock and plants to that. We will just continue developing this all natural filter here and we will see how well that works for us. We may add some little guppies or mollies or something, some type of small fish that we can put up in the top of here also because any waste is going to be fed into the plants. So we're just recycling everything. There's some decently large koi there. So we're just going to keep building upon the filter here, the all natural filter. I just wanted to come out and share this with everybody as I shared a short the other day and wanted to keep up with the development of this pond and share the whole process. So if anybody's got any questions on anything I covered today, please drop it in the comments below. I like to share the whole process and before I filled that whole thing up, the whole natural filter, I wanted to share how I'm doing it and what it looks like as it's just set up. So we basically just built that system and are running off pumps and solar power that we already had running into the greenhouse. So this was a DIY pond for free. Basically whatever investment we had in the beginning, like I said, this is a 10 year old pond liner just a whole bunch of rock and stone and brick and everything we already had on hand. We already had the bucket and little fittings from all of our aquaponics bins. So my camera just died on me. I had to go throw another battery in just to say thank you for watching this video. And if you got any questions, you know where to drop them. We're just gonna continue developing this little pond, possibly make it bigger if we buy a larger liner, but for now, we're going to try and grow some things and filter naturally. And this was the cheapest pond that we could possibly build inside the greenhouse.